Ladies and gentlemen, welcome out. It is week eight of the WBE. Your boy, Seabad, and the Detroit Steel Wings are going for our first win in the final week. We have had a, we've had a bit of a rough season. We're going to take everybody by surprise and come out swinging this week, though. And everybody's going to be like, wow, we should redo the whole season because of how well he played. But uh, in all honesty, we have had a rather rough season. I want to thank you guys from the bottom of my heart for supporting me. I will continue to be in the WBE as long as they have me. And I enjoyed, I've enjoyed every single battle. I feel like every, every, almost every battle, I've walked away with a smile on my face, whether, whether we, whether we lost well or lost poorly. You know, it's been a fun time. I've really enjoyed having these Wi-Fi battles here on the Nintendo Switch. Uh, I wish they do something about the timer, but other than that, it's been a great time. I uh, hope you guys have enjoyed this season. Of course, if you guys have enjoyed, feel free to leave a like. If you guys are new, if you guys like Draft League content, feel free to subscribe because next week we have our draft analysis for the National Competitive Pokemon Hub. It is their third season. We were asked to take over a team, and frankly, our team is kind of disgusting. In a good or a bad way, we'll have to, you guys will have to find out when that draft analysis goes up. But uh, if you feel like draft content's going anywhere and you want to unsubscribe, feel free to stick around because that is continuing on next week. And of course, if you guys want to go in full face cam, feel free to pick up some Detroit Steel Wings merch because we're competing in another league right after this. The merchandise will remain on sale. If you guys want to check it out, pillow, tapestry, hoodie, shirt, sticker, all that fun stuff, um, feel free. Link is in the description as well. We are going up against my man Aaron Cybertron Zang, a fantastic VGC player with a very formidable team. If you guys want to skip on ahead to the battle, I will have some text floating somewhere on screen in post-production so you guys can go check that out. My man does have a pretty a pretty serious team, if I'm being honest. You guys are going to start to see the teams appear on screen right about now. My opponent does have access to the Gigantamax Gengar, which is uh, which was actually one of the Gigantamaxes that I wanted. Unfortunately, it went just a turn too early for me. Um, I did not get it because I feel like it's a really, really great Pokemon to have. Um, and then he has Excadrill, Hippowdon, so he's got a really nasty Sand Core there. He has Jellicent, a bulky Water type, Rotom Mo, a pretty solid Electric Grass type, Umbreon for Wish Passing. He's got Colossal, which, uh, frankly, I, I, I don't for I don't foresee coming, but uh, you know it definitely could. He's got Drampa, Frostlass, and Gallade as well. Some things to note about his team is that he has three Rockers and Colossal, Excadrill, and Hippowdon. He has two spinners in the form of Colossal and Excadrill. He has a Defogger in the form of Drampa, two Spike Setters in the form of Colossal and Frostlass, and he does have some Cleric support with Umbreon as well as uh, Glade getting Wish too. So we're going to go ahead and start off the team. The first Pokemon you guys are going to see appear on the screen. We drafted this team. We thought we should run Sticky Web. Like that'd be a really cool gimmick. And we're eight weeks in and we haven't run Sticky Web once. So we're running Sticky Web. We have Nezuko the Raibombi. She's got her Focus Sash with the Shield Dust ability. Sticky Web, Moonblast, Psychic, and Stun Spore, 108 EVs in HP, 252 EVs in Special Attack, 148 EVs in Speed with the Timid Nature. With 148 EVs in Speed, we are outspeeding both the Gengar and the Frostlass. Uh, we will be able to go for a Stun Spore, provided they are not Scarf. We will be able to get up webs. He does have probably the best spinner in the metagame right now with Excadrill, so that is something we need to keep in mind. But um, should Excadrill not want to come out, should something happen, you know, we do have webs for that reason. Moonblast is pretty free. He doesn't really have much of a resist to that. He's got um, Gengar. Gengar's got a 60 HP base, 75 special defense, so it takes that. But we've got Psychic for that. Excadrill's pretty bulky, so it does take that. But Hippowdon does not like a Moonblast or a Psychic. Um, Jellicent doesn't like a Moonblast. Rotom Moe doesn't like a Moonblast. Umbreon doesn't like a Moonblast. Colossal doesn't like a Psychic. Drampa doesn't like a Moonblast. Moonblast is pretty, pretty free aside from Psychic. And then we've got Stun Sport to slow some things down as well. Pretty straightforward Pokemon opening us up into Halsey the Como. Halsey is not bringing Clangor a soul. We're not, I'm not trying that anymore. I'm not trying it. Instead, we're just bringing Choice Specs Como o with the bulletproof ability. So it blocks things like Shadow Ball um, and Sludge Bomb from the Gengar, uh, as well as some other potential moves. The four moves that we are bringing are Clanging Scales, Focus Blast, Aura Sphere, and Flamethrower, 148 EVs in HP. 252 EVs in Special Attack, 108 EVs in Speed with a Modest Nature. We are outspeeding uh, Timid Gengar and Timid Frostlass after Sticky Webs. Um, the combination of Dragon Fighting and Fire Coverage absolutely nuke his team. And then the Focus Blast is on there in case we need to pick up a roll on something like uh, on something like the Umbreon. Or just do some big boy damage as well with that 120 base power fighting type move. The next Pokemon on the team, I'm really... I'm really Hopeful that this does something. I really would think it would be. I, I think it would be pretty cool. We're bringing Riot the Dewblade with the Air Balloon, No Guard ability, Shadow Claw, Swords Dance, Totemize, and Close Combat. Forty-four EVs in HP, 
252 EVs in attack, 212 EVs in speed with a jolly nature. We are outspeeding Gengar, uh, Timid Gengar and Frostlass at plus two. So we are able to get off an Autotomize and hit some big damage. Swords Dance being able to set up. Air Balloon kind of giving us a little bit more ability. Like if it's a weakened Hippowdon and all he can hit us with is Earthquake, we can kind of get a hit off. Um, if it does have phasing like Whirlwind or things like that, we got to be careful or Fire Fang, Crunch, things of that nature. But the idea is, is that Excadrill should not be able to hit us with an Earthquake. We are able to get a Autotomize or a Swords Dance or even a Close Combat off to knock that thing out because it is a pretty scary po It is a pretty scary Pokemon. I'm not going to lie to you there. But um, hopefully Double Dance Dewblade does something. I think it'd be pretty cool. The next Pokemon we are bringing is going to be Choice Scarf. Burb Smile, the Braviary. Got to bring Braviary Week 8, man. Choice Scarf, Defiant Braviary with Brave Bird, Close Combat, U-Turn, and Defog. 252 EVs in attack, 4 in defense, 252 in speed with a Jolly Nature. Um, I do like the Defiant on there in case the Gigantamax Gengar goes for any moves that give it stat drops. We are able to kind of get that boost back up from Defiant. And his Bird Spam answers really don't exist. He's got, uh, he's got the Colossal, which we can hit with close combat. He's got the Excadrill, which we can hit with close combat. Um, and outside of that, really, nothing really wants a Brave Bird, let alone a plus two Brave Bird after a Defiant boost. Um, U-turn for momentum, and then Defog for any hazard control if we find we cannot get up the webs. If he does set up any of his spikes or his rocks, we will be able to Defog those away. The next Pokemon we're bringing on the team is Sprig of the Vileplume. We're bringing a different Vileplume set this week. Life Orb Chlorophyll with Sunny Day, Growth, Giga Drain, and Moonblast. 100 EVs in HP, 252 EVs in Special Attack, 156 EVs in Speed with a Modest Nature. In the Sun, we outspeed the entirety of his team. The Growth in the Sun does give us plus two Special Attack, and a combination of Giga Drain and Moonblast do a handsome amount of damage to my opponent. Outside of the Gengar, uh, Extra Drill does not like a plus two Giga Drain. Neither does Hippowdon, neither does Jellicent. Uh, Moonblast takes care of Rotom and Umbreon. Giga Drain does some good damage to Colossal. Moonblast to Drampa. Moonblast to Frostlast. Moonblast to Glade. It's a really, really cool set. It also does help deter some of the sand that he has the ability to bring with uh, with his Sand Setter being Hippowdon. We can go for a Sunny Day and trigger. If the Hippowdon goes down and the sand is still up, we can go into Vile Plume, hopefully take a hit, and then click Sunny Day and returns. So that way, not only do we take away the sand, but then also boost us. So we're just a little bit faster. And the last Pokemon on the team we are bringing is surely the Gigantamax Sanaconda. If you got a G-Max Pokemon, you bring it. We have leftovers with the sand availability. So if the sand is up, we're going to be a little bit more agile. Uh, we are bringing Stealth Rock, Glare, Earthquake, and Fire Fang. 236 EVs in HP. 252 EVs in defense. 20 EVs in speed with an impish nature. We're bringing that on there in case any of my opponent's Pokemon decide to try to speed creep a, a bulky Sandaconda. We're going to be just a little bit faster, and then we are going to be able to take some hits in our Gigantamax form, toss off some glares in our regular form for some speed control. We can set up rocks if need be, and then a combination of Earthquake and Fire Fang really just kind of do some damage to my opponent. The uh, Jellicent can certainly take a hit, and then, of course, Rotom, we need to be careful when clicking Fire Fang, as it can come in on an Earthquake, of course, but... That is going to be the team. Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comment section down below. All that being said, we're going to hop right into the battle. Ladies and gentlemen, we are here with week eight of the WBE. If you guys missed the first half of the video, you guys, the first couple minutes, 10 minutes or so, the team builder. You guys see the six that I've got down below there, right? Bombi, Coma O, Dublade, Braviary, Vileplume, and Gigantamax, Sandaconda. You guys see the six that I think he is bringing over there? Gigantamax, Gengar, the Sandcore of Hippowdon, and Excadrill, Jellicent, Umbreon, and Rotomo. Make sure you guys pick up a shirt while supplies last. Also, code CBAT is 30% off for G Fuel. The creator with the most activations during this month gets their very own custom shaker on sale for the public. So consider picking up some G Fuel today using the boys code. I'm going to press A at the starting signal. We're going to be good to go. Let's see the team that he is bringing. Um, I think I'm leading off Vileplume uh, wholeheartedly. I think Hippowdon's a really solid lead against me. I think leading off Vileplume could be pretty beneficial to our cause here. Um... We could also lead Coma O if we want to poke holes pretty neutrally. Um, but Vileplume actually has a chance to Oko a defensive set. So let's see the six that he is bringing. Um, we're spot on except for Umbreon. He is bringing Gallade instead. So that's probably better for the cause. Let's make sure we move him and get him all centered up there. Perfect. Bada bing, bada boom. Let me go on ahead here and let me actually note that on the document while here. Instead of Umbreon, we have Gallade. Perfect. So, like I said, I think um, I think Lead Not Vileplume is actually a pretty solid lead that we can go with. And we can just kind of uh, mess around and go from there. 
Alternatively, we could also go lead Troy Scarf Braviary. Hmm. Hmm. Well, now that I think about it, now that I think about it a little bit more, let me see. Rotom is base 86. Uh, I would outspeed. If it was Scarf Braviary, I would outspeed. So let's let's lead off. I like leading off here with our uh, with our Vile Plume. Let me fill out as much of the dock as I can. We know Gengar is going to have the Cursed Body. We know Apoudon's probably going to have Sand Stream. I assume Axe Drill they have Sand Rush. Jellicent, I'm going to say Water Absorb. Delayed would probably have Justified, and Rotomo has the Levitate. So. Let's go on ahead and see what my opponent is bringing. I'm happy that we were uh, we were right about five out of six. That usually, that almost always never bodes well. So, but uh, the Glade will probably catch us off guard in some aspect. But we got the Dewblade, so we should be pretty good to go there. My opponent leads off with Rotom. Okay, so us leading off with Vile Plume isn't the worst thing in the world. Um, this definitely could be a Scarf set, and if that is a Scarf set. Um, Coma O really takes every hit. I'm just going to go straight into Coma O. If they anticipate a, a Volt Switch or something like that, let's see, uh, let's see what they want to do here. And they do have the Volt Switch. Fine by me. That does some big boy damage. That does big boy damage. My goodness. Um... What did that put us down to? He goes down to Gengar. Okay. A little unfortunate, but, you know, it is what it is. I did 129. I did 24%. Are you choice specs? Modest specs? Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's choice specs Rotom. That is choice specs Rotom. Um, hmm. I like keeping this Pokemon around. I do. I do, I do, I do. And I don't see Webb's doing too much for us, so I'm going to bring in Nezuko, who's going to be faster than this thing, and go for a Psychic. Because I'm not trying to take no G-Max move. I am not. And we've got two options here. We can either go for a Psychic for damage, or we can go for a Sunsborn. He actually just goes straight up for Dazzling Gleam. Which is going to bring us down to about half here. We see that he does have that. Um, I'm just going to toss off a Psychic here. Alternatively, I could just throw off a Stun Spore. I'm going to try to hit it with a Stun Spore. Goes for another Dazzling Gleam. He is Scarf. That's Troy Scarf Gengar. Okay. That's not good. That's not good for us. Uh, let me write that down here. KO's Raibombi with Dazzle. Wow. I don't think I saw that coming. Okay. Um, hmm. I do have a Troy Scarf Braviar here of my own that can come in and do some damage to this thing. That's really unfortunate. All right. All right. Um, Brave Bird should knock this thing out. So I am just going to try to get as much damage as possible on this thing. Choice Scarf Gengar with Dazzling Gleam. But yeah, stun sporing that thing would have been great. Unfortunately, I don't think I anticipated a choice scarf set, but, you know, it works. It does work. Let's see what he wants to go out into. Probably have pout on. It probably have pout on. There it is. Oh, and that's unfortunate, too, because then choice scarf Gengar outspeed. Hmm. All right, we got to do some stuff here. Let's get some Brave Bird damage off. Let's see what he let's see what he's got going for him. That's doing a sizable amount of damage, actually. Do I see any form of? I do not. So I assume Smooth Rock. 
And that was doing about... He could not be as defensive as I think he is. He could not be. Let's le let's go out into Vile Plume here. I want to assume that that's Sand Rush or Smooth Rock. Uh, and he's got Slack off. Okay. He's got Slack off. Okay. So let me go on ahead. What would your what would your pivot into this be? I'm curious. A sunny day here. That was a good play by my opponent. Let me see what this does here. Let's see what he's got cooking. Good Fire Fang. Um, could just get up rocks. If he anticipates like a defensive set. Well, let's see what he wants to do. Gengar is a pretty free switch too if he's got Psychic. Um, we will be faster than everything aside for... I, I don't think he'd run double Scarfer, so that's probably good news for us. I assume that's good news. We'll find out. We'll find out. But I think just going for the sunny day here and negating his sand. He withdraws and goes out into Gallade. Okay. So we're going to get a Moonblast off here pretty nicely. Um, I don't know if he'd anticipate that. I'm just going to go for it. Would he run double Scarf is the question? Or would this be like Banded? Oh, we don't knock it out? Are you serious? Is that AV? I need, it's not, so he just gets an SD off. Okay. That's crazy. All right, so we can just go for a Giga Drain here. To get whatever health we can back from this thing. That's wild. And he does have Shadow Sneak. So we are going to be able to knock him out. Vile Plume knocks out Galley with Giga Drain. Alright. So he's got to go out into his Scarf Gengar here if he wants to revenge me. Uh, but if he Gigantamaxes, um, we're still faster. I don't think we get much damage off, though, because we haven't gone for growth yet. But I think he needs to go out into Gengar in order to revenge me here. And I like keeping this thing around because it does allow us to Giga Drain and chase out that Hippowdon. If we would have growth, yeah, Gengar has to come out here. So Gengar's got to come out and probably go for Psychic or something. Um, let's switch out. What do we go out into here? Braviary. Let's go Braviary. Let's go Braviary. I don't see Braviary doing too much for us, especially now that uh, now the Gallade's gone. Um, we still do have ways of hitting the. We still do have ways of hitting the Rotom as well. So, I am uh, I am fine going out into Braviary here. I see Gigantamaxes. Okay, interesting. Interesting. So Braviary would have been able to come back in and revenge this thing. And depending on the move he goes for, um, if he goes for a ghost move right here, we're in a pretty good position. Oh, shiny G-Max Gengar looks nasty. Bro, that looks so good. That looks so good. Uh, Max Ooze actually was the play. was the poison move. And that is going to knock us out. Okay. We have here, it was a crit. I don't know if that crit mattered, and he now has plus one special attack. Uh, Gengar. KO's Braviary. With Ooze. So, I think we have to go into our Sandaconda and hope we live a hit. In our G-Max form. I think we have to. Let's try it. 
Let us try it. All right. I can also... Ooh, I could also max guard, actually. Let's scout to see what he wants to go for. Let's go for max guard. Let's burn a turn of his stuff. Let's burn a turn of his stuff and see what he wants to do. So we know he's got a poison type move on that thing. I'm going to assume Sludge Wave until proven otherwise. I guess Scarf Gengar was his play for Coma O because if we would have Clangor sold up, that would have been faster. And that's fine. That's fine. So he's going to let me Gigantamax and we're going to burn one turn of his. So now the question is. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. Jeez. Oh, My God, that's so devastatingly strong. And he's got max over. Yeah, I don't think we live this one, kids. I don't think we live this one. Can I get a double max guard? Uh, what is plus one? I don't think I do. Let me check. Energy ball. Oh my god, yeah, no. No, 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 no. <laughs> um. It just hits so hard. I'm gonna go for a G Max Sandblast and hope. Goes for max overgrowth here. That's gonna one shot. Oh my god, Gengar's a monster. I knew I wanted Gengar. Oh my god, that's so good. Uh, KOs. Sandy. With Overgrowth. Alright, um, that was his last turn of Gigantamaxing. So I guess what we need to do is... think I'm gonna go Halsey and I'm gonna try to force him to go for the Dazzling Gleam I'm gonna try to force him to go for the Dazzling Gleam here as I double out into Vileplume goes for the Shadow Ball, actually. I'm bulletproof. I'm bulletproof. Hello, sir? Okay. Um. KOs. Or er, Vile Plume. With Shadow Ball. Um, yeah, I'm bulletproof, sir. Let's go in and nuke something really quickly. Let's nuke as much as we can real quick. Uh, choice specs, clanging scales. Yeah, I don't see a resist on your team. Alright, yeah, Bulletproof takes care of that, and we're gonna be able to knock out the Gengar here. That's unfortunate that we could have kept, uh, that's unfortunate that we could have kept, uh, Vileplume around. Oh, and he got the cursed body on it, too? Damn. Uh, Coma O. KOs. Gengar. With clanging scales. Um, so depending on how we play our games. Does he have to go for Earthquake here? What else would you have? Like Stone Edge? Ice Fang? Like, I'm gonna go out into Dewblade here. Since I'm choice locked and locked out. I have to, and I have to hope that I just clanging scales sweep the rest of his team. But I have to autotomize, I think, first. 
I have to hope he goes for like Earthquake or something. Goes for the Earthquake there. Okay, cool. So now what we do is we Autotomize. Stealth Rock, Slack Off, Earthquake. You need something to hit me. Do you have Whirlwind? Does he have Whirlwind? He does have Whirlwind. Okay, well that means that just still means that I get clinging scales in my um And that means that my uh my Coma O now hits something pretty hard. How much was clinging scales doing to this thing? Uh Coma O to Hippowdon. What just happened? What did I miss? I missed that. Um, Clanging Seals is 78 to 92. Focus Blast is 84 to 99. Or a Sphere 2 hit KOs. I think I still need to go for Clanging Scales, though. I need to get as much damage off as possible. Even if he does Earthquake or Whirlwind me. He just sets up rocks. That's fine. Because if he lets this thing go down, there's no more sand for Excadrill. I mean, yeah, he's got a few turns, but... You know... I'm trying to think how many turns the sand has been up, actually. I'm trying to think, because he can probably just go for Iron Head with Excadrill to knock me out. Um, and then I'd have to try to Clanging Scale sweep the rest of his team. We will see. Alright, so Koma O knocks out Hippowdon, so no more sand. Oh, I think it was the grassy terrain ending. Was that what ended? Here comes Excadrill. All right. I think what I need to do here... Did you go for Iron Head? I think he does go for Iron Head. I mean, I'm minus two either way. How many more turns of sand are there? How many more turns of sand are there? few more turns, unfortunately. I think I need to get as much damage off as I can. He just goes for the Iron Head. Okay. Yeah, minus two. That's going to knock us out. Um, oh, and he's Life Orb. Uh, drill, KOs. Um, um, oh. With Iron Head. Now, my question is... I think I knock out Excadrill with close combat. Let me check. I do. And he KOs me in return with Earthquake. So I need to go. I need to not get Iron Head flinched. I need to not get Iron Head flinched here. I need to not get Iron Head flinched here. Let's see what happens. I can't autonomize me fast this thing. He'll Iron Head, then Earthquake pop me. He goes for the Iron Head. Please do not flinch. 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 And we're going to pick up the KO on extra drill to close combat. KO's drill with CC. Now, here's the unfortunate part is that um, Rotom comes out and nukes me. 
And that's the unfortunate part, and I think that's where the game is. We're gonna we're gonna lose 2-0, unfortunately. Because I don't think minus one Dewblade with no EVLI takes any hit from a Specs Rotom. Unless by some miracle I live one hit. And I get a crit Shadow Claw. I don't think I do. I think this is it right here. Discharge. Uh, yep, that's going to be game. All right. GG's to my man, Cybertron. Sure, it was a, a hell of a match. I really enjoyed it. I hope you guys enjoyed the finale of our WBE run here in Season 4. Um, I definitely had a lot of fun in this matchup. I hope you guys did enjoy. I really liked the teams. I thought it was a great match. I had a lot of fun. It was a great way to end off this season. So... If you guys have enjoyed, I ask that you guys leave a like on the video. And of course, if you guys are new, feel free to subscribe for more because our NCP Hub draft analysis goes up next week. It is going to be a fun one. All that being said, I want to remind you guys to be great and do great. And I'll see you on the next video. Later.